What's up, Lou? What the fuck? They didn't let us into multiverses. Uh, I I checked my email this morning. I was so excited. I thought, you know, surely us, the ones who care so much about Bugs Bunny and his power level, they'd let us in. Right? And you know, I, I, <laughs> it only makes and sense, I am, right? And I am also Rain Dog's biggest fan, and he's going to be making a few appearances coming up in Looney Tunes. So, like, I ideally need to right. like get it. Here's the: if I don't get into this demo, they're doomed. Like. I know more about this character than anyone, and it's just, it's over. They fucked up so bad. I, if you're listening to this, Mister Mister Multiverses, I forgot the lead dev's name. Um, maybe <laughs> consider changing your mind. You know, consider Steven Universe changing your mind. Maybe um, just think for a second about how much like free publicity we've been giving uh, your main character Rain Dog, because yeah. Rain Dog is going to be featuring in some of these shorts that we're going to be talking about, and I just think that it's a little maybe... embarrassing. Yeah, it's, it's a little I, I'm also the CEO of the channel We Are Rain Dog. Like I'm kind of like <laughs> the number one fan. And they didn't even they didn't even let us. They in. didn't even let us. Well, in. Actually, I mean, maybe they let us in while we were talking. Let me check my email. No. Nah, let me check. Not uh, just a, just a stupid email about a therapy appointment or something. Not about Rain Dog. What What do we do again? We talk about Looney Tunes. Yeah, we talk about here. Looney Tunes and who would win in the epic. Ultimate showdown between them. Yes, I mean, and we don't even need multiverse to do it. We could just do it on our own. Multiverse is in our head, and it's not even. I don't even know if it'd be technically a multiverse because they're all in the same universe. Yeah. But we don't even need Steven Universe to determine anything. We don't need Steven. We don't need Jake the dog. We don't need um that girl from Game of Thrones. Yeah. We can use our, we can use our sharp wit and intellect to figure out which of the Looney Tunes is in fact objectively the most powerful and strongest um due to logic and reasoning of course of course so do you want to, do you want to get into it you want to get into the loonies tunes yes i do i really do okay <laughs> i want to talk about, i want to talk about a corny concerto from 1943 this is a um this is a jam-packed one right uh, so here. this is a fantasia parody as the kids say um it starts with my dear friend Elmer Fudd looking ugly as hell. Uh, he looks kind of <laughs> monstrous in this short, like just horrible. Like he hasn't slept in weeks. Kind of look to him. Uh, the I, baggy eyes, a uh, four o'clock shadow, or whatever. I have to assume this is some sort of pop culture reference. I don't get because I don't get references that aren't Shrek. Um, yeah. So he comes on stage like, "Oh, we want today. We're gonna show you some shorts." And then, uh, so this is this is a short with two shorts in it. Um, and the first one is a short about Porky Pig, of all characters. Yeah, Porky's back. Uh, and he's trying to hunt down Bugs Bunny with, and, you know, folks, get ready. There's a dog. There's a dog with Porky. Yeah, <laughs> there's a Looney Tunes dog, yet again. And this is, this is a fun one because it's completely silent aside from the music, so it's just, it's just fun. Lots of gags, lots of goofs. It's, I think this is a for er, our first time. Seeing Porky and Bugs kind of go head to head. They don't right? do that a lot, do they? No, I, I, I don't have a lot of um, recollection of that happening, you know. But I, I guess I'd be surprised to see more of it. But it's I mean, Porky's. I think Porky's standing up on his own pretty all right. Yeah, Porky's He's doing pretty good. Gun. But the dog's kind of the one losing heart in this short. Uh, when this short <laughs> starts, Bugs Bunny annihilates that dog. It's maybe the hardest he's ever just started wailing on a character ever in this short. <laughs> He really hates that fucking dog. <laughs> he just pounds him. I, I think at one point, does like Bugs get a hold of Porky's gun, or a, a chipmunk gets a hold of <laughs> yes, Porky's correct, gun? Yes. Which, that's and you know I gotta say Porky, that's not the safest um you know gun safety. I feel like Porky could really work on that, maybe take a class, because I don't think you should let a chipmunk try and shoot you <laughs> with your own gun. I think it's very dangerous. Uh, we can also, so the chipmunk also then proceeds to shoot all, at all three of them, and there's an extended sequence where they all slowly check if they were shot or not. And of course, Mr. Bugs Bunny uses this opportunity to use his famous um, fool the person to thinking I died move. Yes, he loves that. He loves that move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, Porky doesn't break down as hard as like Elmer Fudd does sometimes. Like Elmer Fudd has a full on like temper tantrum cry about it. Porky's just a little upset, but then Bugs Bunny uses his iconic bra move. 
He has also um, explain the explain the bra move um, step by step for me, please. So Porky Pig is like holding Bugs Bunny in his arms, and he like gets closer and closer, and then Bugs goes like, yeah, and then he like covers like his chest area, and then he's like wearing a bra, and then he gives like a, like a kiss, and he hits him with the bra, and then he runs off. He prances off, I he would say, beautifully. Off, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, in tempo with the music. And I just think that that's so powerful for Bugs, uh, so confident in his gender representation that he can just wear whatever. Um, it was kind of rude of Porky to be so close to his bra area, I think. Yeah, what the fuck? Um, so we're going to just like, any points we've ever given Porky, we're just going to take all of those yeah. away right now. He's back down, he's, he's back at like negative three. <laughs> oh, Porky, Porky, Porky. Uh, but the second short in here is an interesting one because it features baby daffy duck i have to assume and for one brief moment one gleeful moment i thought it could have been our dear friend sleepy Sleepy lagoon Lagoon, but it was not it was not sleepy lagoon it was in fact baby daffy and so this lets us know you know confirmed fact that um daffy was always kind of a little bit of an annoying bitch (laughs) even as a baby (laughs) he's always like this he was always like this but i would say in this one he's got a kind of sense of justice you know maybe a longing for a family yeah yeah uh the vulture character in the short tries to capture the babies later and daffy duck out of the good of his heart saves them yeah it's like some swan and her babies and he's like keeps like pestering them like he wants to be like part of the gang but he's a you know he's an ugly duck so he oh, can't be i get part it of now it's ugly duckling i get it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you didn't get it before <laughs> no Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. <laughs> I didn't get it. Not until now. Well, and, and and that's the thing is, like, Daffy's not getting too much out of this. He just likes these guys. He wants to be around them. And then the vulture steals the babies, and he's like, I'm gonna do something about it, even though they were kind of mean to him before. They hate so, his, like, it, quacking when they sing is the main thing. Yeah. It's pretty It's pretty annoying. I, I would, if, if that little thing showed up in my pond, I don't think I'd be very fond of it either. So I can understand where the swan mother is coming if from. If I saw that little thing show up in my pond, I would crush it <laughs> until it was a little black stain. But that that's a, that's a Daffy versus Vulture situation. Yeah. Which, I guess, I mean, I mean, it, Daffy wins, obviously. Yeah. That's how that's how that goes. So that just shows that Daffy can hold against you know someone much bigger and older than him in when his youth. Uh, when he feels it. Yeah, in his youth, he's he's very powerful in his youth. Maybe a little more morally good in his youth. I think I think <laughs> I think what the short has explained to us is that I think Daffy Duck is a character who corrupts over time. Like he starts off as a <laughs> as a as a, like a heroic youth baby character. And then he gets a bit older, and he's still, like, kind of zany and wacky and powerful, but he's using his powers for evil and corruption now, and he just wants to make everyone's lives worse. And then he turns, like, 40, and he becomes, like, a bitter old man, like, just wants attention so badly, but everyone, like, Duke's <laughs> Bunny more. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see this play out more. Um, In the first short, in this short, what I guess it's a Bugs win, yeah? Oh, he of got course, away. yeah, he got away. He, and he uses bra attack, I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, no doubt. So we we got kind of a Daffy and a Bugs win in the same short, technically, even though they did not say hi to each other. Uh, <laughs> they, I, were, they were not around. I do need to mention, though, we forgot to mention one thing. This is important for, like, Daffy's stats. He does have a turn into a plane move. Oh, yes, he does <laughs> turn into a plane. Um, he His mirror self also is, like, yeah. possibly not him. <laughs> Yeah, so Daffy, was... Daffy can summon his mirror self to attack others in the mirror dimension. Don't forget that. Yeah, don't forget. That's going to be really important later down the line. Uh, well, that's enough on that one. What's the other one we watched? Uh, next up is Duck Soup to Nuts, which is a kind of a classic uh, Porky and Daffy fucking around type of short. Um, so this short starts with Daffy Duck being maybe the fruitiest we've ever seen him yet. He's just in his <laughs> pot and he's like, doing his nails and like he then porky comes with his testosterone filled masculine gun which is <laughs> he's known for calling it that. <laughs> porky porky's so like like masculine in the short he's like he, he's like he eats meat and he hates soy and he he's so strong with his gun and he's like really cool he has two guns in this one he's got a you know a hunting rifle and just like a regular pistol which you know he's he came you know i want to say this he came prepared he knew that eventually that gun would be taken from him by either a rabbit or a duck. He's doing better than Elmer ever was. Yeah, <laughs> he 
kind of is. Uh, he, Baffy, you know, goes up to Porky, you know, as usual, and he's like, "Hey, what the heck? I'm, I'm like a, I'm a talented guy here. You can't just shoot me. I got a contract with Warner Brothers." <laughs> and he starts putting on the act of a lifetime. I think this just solidifies our, our previous theory that Daffy is just a theater kid. He is, in, yes. And deep down in his heart. <laughs> uh, he assumes many roles. He becomes the hero, the villain. He's, he does many roles in this short. He gets very close with Porky, like, in a, in a very, t- I should say, he gets very touchy <laughs> with Porky. I gotta say, those, what, what do they call it, dorky? Those dorky shippers, they're onto something. That's that what they call it? Dorky? I don't know. What do they call it? Paffy? I feel like it, Paffy? No, because... I think Bugs and Daffy is Baffy, so I think naming it Paffy would be confusing. Uh, so it's be gotta be funny so too. it's gotta be dorky. Well, maybe they kind of do like a, I don't know, da, da, oh, uh, pu, 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 no, there's no way. <laughs> I try to try everything. It has to be there's dorky. No I'm sorry. It has to be dorky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those dorky shippers, they're they're eaten in this one because they're getting all familiar with each other now. This is something we talked about in the boxing short where Daffy was, you know, surrounded by peers and yeah. people who loved him. I think that that continues in this one. He has, well, he plays a little trick on Porky where he, you know, Porky's going to shoot him. Uh-huh. And he's like, can I say goodbye to my my precious family first? And these crying ducks come out of the water and... It, what's, he gives them all a, a <laughs> kiss all have on the really beak. really funny names too. What is it? It's like... I forget their names, but they're really funny. One of those funny. Lanthrope. Lanthrope. He kisses it and goes, goodbye, Lanthrope. Like, goodbye, Cecilia. <laughs> and then, you know, Porky's like, well, I can't shoot him. He's got a family. You know, I'm not going to do that to the wife and kids. So he walks away. And as soon as he does, of course, the, the family rips off their disguises and get all, like, bowler hats and cigarettes in their <laughs> mouth. And they're just like, ah, fuck that guy. <laughs> ah, <laughs> really Daffy good. and my boy. Oh, Daffy and the boys. We did it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got boys. He's got friends, which is I feel like uncommon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, again, again, we're seeing Daffy at his peak right now. We're like he's gonna fall so hard soon. I and and I feel like we've been saying that for a while. I'm waiting for it to happen. Like he's standing on the cliff, and I'm just like watching, <laughs> waiting second, for him to topple the, over. The literal second Bugs Bunny enters that man's life, it's over for him. <laughs> and the thing is, though. That I don't think this is a Daffy win because right at the very end, Porky comes back, you know, immediately is like, oh, 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 screw you guys. You tricked me and start shooting at them. And they all just like start hopping around and like running away. (laughs) Yeah. So I I agree. I think this was I think if anything, this was maybe a Porky win. So turn his negative three into a negative two. (laughs) Yeah. Can you get you get one back up, Porky? So you're on the way. Don't worry. Maybe we'll get we'll get back to your Por- former glory. Porky was kind of odd on this short, though. Like, I feel like he like he doesn't cry or like f- like fling around like Elmer Fudd does. He's like ready to kill Daffy at every moment in the short. Yeah, like it's only because Daffy like pulled at his heartstrings just a bit, and it wasn't even like Porky was like, oh, he's got a family. <laughs> he was yeah. just like, ah. I can't do that. That's that. That would suck. And he kind of just walks away. Like he's very mature. I would say Porky's a very mature person. In now this short. there is one other thing of the short to bring up, and it's Daffy Duck's gills. Um, Daffy Duck can <laughs> go underwater for as long as he wants. That's a new move of his. <laughs> he did say something like that, right? He, he. I don't know what he said specifically, but he does have the power to just sit underwater as long as he needs to. Yeah, and. At one point, he, like, gets inside Porky's gun, and when Porky fires it, Daffy comes out like a bullet. I don't know what that power would be called, but he does have it. He can do it. So, so you know, and keep that in mind next time he has to deal with a gun. I mean, I feel like he should just use that move every time. Just c- crawl in there and <laughs> get himself away from the situation. I have to say, I think this is the closest short we've watched so far. I feel like both the players in this game were on their A game, you know? They were both really really giving it their all yeah i gotta say you're right about that i i think that both porky and daffy were playing to their strengths but neither of them were really getting the upper hand too much you know before the other came along so i, I think this was a fair i think this was a fair fight mm. a very fair fight as opposed to usually it's not very <laughs> fair so what usually happens next up is the old gray hair uh, which is a short about El- uh, God himself sending Elmer Fudd to the distant future of the year 2000. 
Uh, oh, it's so futuristic. So you can finally get Bugs Bunny. <laughs> yeah, this one immediately opens on Literally. Elmer sitting on the ground and crying. <laughs> like, I, I can't stress this enough. The short title appears and then it fades to black and then literally get right after that just <laughs> He's it's crying. Just over crying, crying. And he's like, Why? Why can't I get that rabbit? When can I ever get him? And I don't know. I, I felt for him here. I didn't know it ate at him so much. That yeah, to that get little him soy so cuck who just wants that rabbit so bad. <laughs> And who to answer Elmer's query than God himself who calls from the heavens and thrusts him into the future uh, to, to see what he will, if and when he will finally get that rabbit. So Elmer's in 2000. He's got like a space ray gun rifle or something. And he's old. Oh, he's old. <laughs> I want to take a step back real quick, uh, though. Um, I want to talk about God a bit more. You know, you're right. Let's talk about that. I want to talk <laughs> Welcome about to our Christian podcast. That, yeah, God himself is in this short, um, and he, he apparently likes Elmer enough to, like, help him with the situation, like, send him to the future, like, specifically talk to him. So does that mean that Elmer might be a man of faith? I think so. Okay, well, that's good to know. A and it could also mean that maybe God has a little bit of a soft spot for Elmer. Maybe he wants to help him, but he, you know, he can't do too much up there in the clouds where he lives. So he, he's just doing this one big gesture to help Elmer. Exactly. As much as he can. As, as a practicing Christian man, uh, he goes to church every <laughs> Sunday. He decides it's Elmer's time to, like, get his... Uh, oh, God, please, please, I'm atoning for my sins. Do you th do you think Elmer is like 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 you know like Christian or is he like Catholic or you know you know uh, what's that thing press the is that a fi that's the that's the fish thing I'm feeling I'm feeling Christian Elmer I imagine him like at like church stakeouts and he's at the grill <laughs> he's at the grill he's at the grill <laughs> he he you know helps with the youth groups you the, know he the does like groups. crafts projects and stuff yeah. Oh, he's got like a rich life there, and and he just can't shake his like sin of of the you know the chase. You know, he That's just what wants that rabbit so bad, and God's trying to help him steer away from that path. Right, he wants him to know it's it's not gonna happen. Like, just let it go. Just you know, go back to the church, and maybe you'll find a nice Christian woman to settle down with. But Elmer just can't. He just can't let it go. You think part of that is that Elmer, uh, as a Christian man, is bought <laughs> his angry. <laughs> and, it's and, what it and all shoot, represents. And shooting, wanting to shoot that Bugs Buddy, who's a mega fruit, is him like venting about it, really? You know, you raise some good points there. Uh, hey, everyone in the in the comments, why don't you let us know if you think that Elmer Fudd is repressed homosexual, taking his feelings out on Bugs Bunny? Uh, let us know. Thank okay, you. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's in the future now. <laughs> yeah. In the world of tomorrow. Yes, and Bugs is also there and he looks horrendous. He's so old. He's so old. <laughs> he's still he's still like he's still kind of spry though, he's, I would he's say. He's very for... spry for his age, yes. Yeah, and finally, you know, Elmer shoots him with his big ray gun. And, you know, as he's laying there dying, and Elmer is of course regretting it immediately. Like he <laughs> yeah, always he does. does. Uh, Bugs brings up a little photo album of a little baby Elmer. <laughs> and we <laughs> learn like, we learn the epic origin story of of Bugs, baby Bugs, and baby Elmer. It is, I I as we were watching it, I called it Baby Looney Tunes, and Ryan got very mad at me for saying. No, that. I feel like it's a disservice to the short to call this Baby Looney Tunes. <laughs> It was. It's pretty fun. I mean, I mean, it just shows that the hatred, the pure like, you know, just wanting, wanting to kill each other. You know, that was always there. There was no inciting incident. We can now be laid to rest that theory. There was no inciting incident. This was just fate. They've been friends and enemies forever. Elmer Fudd. That's kind of beautiful. Bought his little pop gun to pour that bugs his little hole. And it just started. Uh, a important stat I learned from this, by the way, 
Uh, any future Looney Tunes baby character must have after afternoon nap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, there's a point where they're like, running around and, and Bugs is like, well, it's time for babies to have their nap. And they're both like, okay. And they lay down and like power nap for a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's a weak point. If they're a baby, if for some reason the Looney Tune is a baby, at any point they could be, they could succumb to the call of an afternoon nap <laughs> that all babies must, must have. Um, we, we cut back after this beautiful origin story, kind of a masterpiece for the story. Um, <laughs> Elmer has begun to, like, carry Bugs to his tombstone, and then Bugs starts digging his own grave. It's um, horrible. <laughs> and, and Elmer is crying and crying, and Bugs says, It's the end for me! Oh, it's over for my life is over! And Elmer's just crying, like, No! No! And then Bugs <laughs> walks into his grave, shaking Elmer's hand, and as he does this, he turns around and puts Elmer in the grave instead. And then we get the iconic So long, Methuselah! <laughs> so long, Methuselah! <laughs> he buries, he starts burying Elmer alive! <laughs> and he's just like sitting there like, well, I mean, what did he expect? I, I guess I'm away from that rabbit forever, though. Because at the last moment, Bugs Bunny returns with a stick of dynamite just for his dear friend, Elmer. <laughs> he, put, he just, like, puts it in his hand while he's still underground. <laughs> That's a special kind of fucked up. Bugs has issues. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, so does Elmer. You know, everyone Looney Tunes just has issues, so they're not going to therapy for it. You know, that would really, I feel like, nerf a lot of the characters if they went to therapy, so I, uh, I suggest you don't suggest it again. Okay, that's fair. Because <laughs> the, they can't go to therapy, otherwise they're going to lose all their abilities. <laughs> Daddy can no longer turn to a plane if he goes to therapy. <laughs> uh, well, the last short I am so excited to talk about. Yeah, I bet you are. I'll give you, I'll bet give you guys one guess as to why. Oh, this is a, it's called Hair Force. It's night from 1944, and it is a Bugs Bunny and a Looney Tunes dog. Specifically, the dog's name is Sylvester. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess they really liked that name. I guess they did. Uh, you were so excited when the dog appeared. Do you want to talk about the dog a bit? <laughs> so excited that this dog is the coolest looney tunes dog forget what i said about laramore from last time okay this is the coolest looney tunes dog he is actually i feel like able to go one-to-one -one with bugs at one point he even tricks bugs into going outside and he's like standing by the door arms crossed singing a little song all smug like and then he like slams the door in bugs face oh it was so badass it was the cool it's sylvester you gotta be the coolest Looney Tunes dog. Don't you agree, Ryan? I gotta say, uh, you need to put this on screen, like an image of this. When the short starts, you know, the start of it, the dog starts fantasizing about all the ways it's gonna kill bugs. And it gets a <laughs> bigger and bigger grin as it thinks about it. It's like very Grinch-like. <laughs> it's just like thinking of all the ways that he's going to kill this rabbit. And, and the, con the contention here is that Bugs is a, is a wild animal out in the cold snow, and the owner, who's this old lady, keeps, like, bringing him in. She's like, oh, you know, here you go, sit by the, by the fire, take the dog's blanket and stuff. So they're fighting over who gets to stay in the house, uh, which, you know, it's, it's pretty fun. You know, they go throwing each other in and out, yeah. you know, pulling tricks. Um, Bugs Bunny uses the art of the door in this short a lot. He uses that door to, like, hurt the dog a ton. Oh yeah, <laughs> I I think though that was what's important here is that at one point, Bugs has like a moment of like guilt or remorse, kind of like in the middle of the short, he throws the dog out, and after a while, you know, he's like, uh, where's the I I can't leave him out there, and he brings him back in as like an icicle. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like totally frozen. You know, some humanity for Bugs there. That ain't too bad. You know, I, you know what, Bugs? I'm sorry I called you fucked up early. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Bugs Bunny cool knows where to draw the line. You know, he's being a good friend. And then, you know, except at the end, uh, when we learned apparently uh, the reason for the conflict the entire time was that Grandma was in the house upstairs away from <laughs> them because they kicked Grandma out at the end as a gag. And then they're both fine with each other. Yeah, I, I don't know why Grandma was the point of contention there. She wasn't even... I, I don't know why Grandma 
was an issue, right? Like, she was just upstairs pretty much the whole time. It's not like it was an either-or situation. They could have both just been in the house the whole time. But you know what? I don't mind this ending because it means that technically it's a Looney Tunes dog and Bugs Bunny win. Yeah. <laughs> they both won against the grandma character. <laughs> they do. They both defeat grandma. I think they quote unquote defeat grandma. <laughs> yeah, they totally fucked her up. They, they beat the shit out of grandma. And now Bugs and the dog are friends. And I just think that's such a beautiful way to to end this this batch of shorts is just having a, a you know a Looney Tunes dog on top for once. I agree. I'm glad. I'm happy for you as the number one Looney Tunes dog character fan. The number one Looney Tunes dog. I mean, fan you, character. you are running the Twitter Looney Tunes dog for multiverses, so right. <laughs> and they better they better let me in. Yeah, if, if they <laughs> add that stupid dog from Tom and Jerry Butcher, or whatever, uh, if they add him instead of Looney Tunes dog, it's fucking over. They fucked up so bad. It's over. It's over so fast. Well, do we, do we have any comments? Yeah, I was about to get to those. Uh, these two kind of go together. Uh, one is f from Flurpurf, which is, what pair of characters do you think will never face off? And then another one from Eve Buffkin is, what is your Looney Tunes dream matchup? Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Here's what I think. I think that, like, anyone in the in the main cast is probably fair game. They They'll probably match up. I'm going to take some of the, like, side Looney Tunes characters. Like, I don't think Pepe Le Pew is ever going to face off against, like, I don't know, Porky, right? Yeah. Like, like that that doesn't make any sense. What would they even do? Yeah, I mean, that would suck. <laughs> that would suck. Um, uh, What about you? What do you think? What's you, What do you think is, like, never going to happen? Um, I don't... I feel like... I feel like Roadrunner... And Bugs Bunny can never go up against each other because they're both the characters who win. Right. Like, Roadrunner always wins. There's not even a contest there. Yeah. Uh, now, like, uh, Bugs Bunny can lose, but Roadrunner can't. Now, on the flip side, the flip side to this question of uh, what would your dream matchup be, uh, I want Bugs Bunny to decimate uh, Tweety Bird. I want Tweety Bird <laughs> to be dead. Uh, I want Bugs Bunny to, like, in the show, zero mercy whatsoever. Uh, I don't want... He doesn't even need a reason to start attacking. He just should start attacking. Uh, he should just go so for it and kill Tweety. You think Bugs Bunny should mercilessly murder I Tweety do. Bird for I no do. reason? I really do. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't think of really... I guess in terms of dream matchup, i just like to see some, like... To, not to sound predictable, but I'd love to see Foghorn Leghorn go up against some of the main cast a little bit. I don't know what how or why... But like he's kind of stuck in the in the barnyard corner of Looney Tunes, and he gets to hang out with like Barnyard Dog and Priscilla and Henry Chicken Hawk, but really not not much else. He goes up against Sylvester. Yeah, but Sylvester sucks. Oh, and come I hate on, it. come on. What what do you think he would? How badly would Foghorn lose against Bugs Bunny? pretty bad the thing is they, they have very con i feel like contrasting personalities mm -hmm. like foghorn's whole shtick is that like he talks too much and he's like overconfident and, and he's but he's kind of stupid right like he's a little stupid but he really thinks he's really smart yeah. and he like talks like endlessly and i feel like it'd be really hard for like bugs money to resist like just kind of like standing there and going uh-huh sure yeah. <laughs> like well yeah like while doing something kind of like fucked up to him like i don't think bugs bunny would actually like do much in the short he would just kind of let foghorn play out a scenario and in that scenario foghorn would most definitely get injured and bugs would kind of just like let it happen <laughs> <laughs> all right back good luck <laughs> yeah exactly exactly uh here's a question from gloomy what would bugs and daffy's among us colors be oh my god what does that mean <laughs> what colors would they pick in among us well, I think Daffy would pick something like colorful, like maybe purple. Uh huh. I think I think Daffy would pick like a, a nice purple. Um, I think Bugs would just pick like the default, like white or red. You think so? You know. You think he's? You think he's just a basic pick? Yeah, I I just don't think he'd care enough. He'd just be like, sure, whatever. This is the one I'm picking, and like kind of speaks for itself, you know. Okay. All right. It's kind of like how when you play TF2 and there's like a scout. 
who's playing with like just a ghastly gibbous on his head and like it looks really plain and boring but like he's at the top of the leaderboard and he keeps killing you yeah you know what i mean yeah i agree that's the kind of vibe i get like he's just gonna wear he's not even gonna put a hat on his among us he's just gonna be the red among us and he's going to win every time the red among us the he's gonna be the red one (laughs) okay all right uh i think that does it for this week yeah do you got any anything you want to say before we before we go no, I got nothing, but this was a fun batch. I think that uh, we're going to have some fun ones coming up soon, too. Uh, so I guess we'll see everybody well, later. You say there's fun ones coming up, but Tweety Bird is coming up. So, I mean, That's, unfortunately. We were really close to watching a Tweety Bird We were dangerously Bird close, but Sylvester wasn't in it, so we didn't have to watch it. We were saved. <laughs> I think it was, like, the Tweety Bird short, too. <laughs> like, the first one. Oh, darn. We're not going to see that little freak's introduction. Oh, no. Oh no, aren't you devastated? Oh uh, no, I'm never gonna recover. Oh uh, no, jeez. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, that's all for now. See y'all later. Goodbye, folks. Bye bye.